I'm going to show you all the products that I use to maintain my long hair, but before I get into that, I need to first say two major things that have impacted my hair. The first is my genetics. I feel it's only fair to acknowledge that I was genetically blessed in the hair department. So when I was born, in fact, it was the talk of the entire hospital <laughs> and the unit, uh, the birthing unit, because I was born with a full head of black hair and it was hilarious <laughs> and definitely an anomaly. So there's that. And the second component that I need to mention that has made the biggest impact besides my genes is my diet and the fact that I have over the years, over the recent years, I should say, I have gained roughly 30 pounds. That 30 pound weight gain has made a huge impact. Well, it's made a huge impact on everything, clearly, <laughs> but it has made a huge impact on my hair. So my hair is now restored as far as the thickness goes. That has not been an easy uh, feat. I will talk about my hair care routine. So I shampoo my hair twice or three times per week. And my favorite shampoo, the one I'm currently using, is the VO5 Extra Body Volumizing Shampoo. So I'm almost finished with the one I have, and I have a new one right here. And I like this product because it's very uh, simple and it's inexpensive and it cleans my scalp really well. And uh, the main reason I like it is the scent is not overpowering or offensive. So I use that. And then in recent years, about two years ago, I was doing some research and I came across this anti-dandruff shampoo. And I have to say, I don't suffer from dandruff, so I can't speak to it being effective in terms of its dandruff uh, control uh, because I don't have that condition. So uh, I bought it, however, because the active ingredient in this product in some studies has been shown to prevent hair loss and even promote hair growth. So if there's something that I can do, an inexpensive way that I can uh, promote hair growth, I thought, why not? And I will use this about two or three times per month. So I don't use it every time I shampoo, but I do think the, the you can look into this product the scientific literature about the active ingredient in this product seems to be rather promising. So in any event, I'm not sure whether it's doing anything, <laughs> if I can just be frank, but I thought if it uh, can preserve my hair and prevent um, hair loss, then why not use it? And I don't typically use a conditioner because those uh, conditioners leave a residue on my hair, which I don't enjoy. So I don't use a conditioner every time I shampoo. About every other time I'll use a conditioner. I use the one that corresponds with the uh, anti-dandruff shampoo. And I chose this because of the ingredients. Rather, what it doesn't contain, it doesn't contain sulfates, parabens, artificial fragrances, or dyes. In fact, this barely has any scent whatsoever. Uh, and I like that about it. I'm not even sure of its conditioning uh, properties because I don't, moving on to another thing I don't do is I don't brush my hair. Rather, I use a wide tooth comb. That's as far as I go with brushing my hair because I don't want to pull or tear the hair. Another thing I don't do is I never blow dry my hair. So twice a year, my hair gets blow dried when I uh, go to the hairdresser. The rest of the time, I let it air dry naturally, and I typically wash my hair in the evening, and then I will loosely roll it with my fingers, and I put a towel over my pillowcase, and I go to sleep like that. And in the morning, my hair is still damp, and I'll just let it air dry throughout the day. Or oftentimes, I will braid it loosely to the side, and it dries in that way, and then when I take it out, there's a nice natural wave imparted from the braid. So that's my typical practice. I do have one hot tool that I use, 
and I don't like to use heat on my hair, but this tool I really do like. And I like it because I can control the temperature on it. It has a temperature gauge, so I put it on the lowest setting. I've used it today and it doesn't curl my hair so much as it imparts a nice natural wave and it increases the shine, I find. It makes my hair really shiny when I use that. So I know that it's bad, <laughs> hot tools are bad, but I'm not going to lie. And this is what I use when I do feel like styling my hair and not doing the braiding thing. But more often than not, I do the braid and then I take it out of the braid and let it uh, be naturally wavy. Another thing I use, you saw these in my tinted moisturizer video. I like to use these Velcro, hair Velcros. These were actually a gift from a dear friend of mine. So these are very popular in Korea and Japan. You can find these, in fact, at any uh, Korean grocery store. They, they usually have these in the beauty section. So many of you asked me what these were, actually. <laughs> That's what they are, and I do love them. I've had them for years, and they just gently... Uh, it's a gentle way to hold the hair out of your face if you are putting makeup on or even skincare. So I use those. I think that's, oh, one other thing I don't do, major thing I don't do to my hair is I don't color it. So my hair is virgin hair completely. Um, this is the natural color of my hair. And I stay away from dyeing it because hair color contains a lot of harsh chemicals that are damaging to the hair. That being said, I am yet to have gray hair, and so my mind might change when I go gray. <laughs> when I start uh, graying, uh, my mind might change about that if I decide to color my hair or not. So I don't want to jump the gun and say that I'm never going to dye my hair. But for the time being, I just let it be natural, uh, both to save it from the exposure to those harsh chemical hair dyes, and also because I just enjoy my natural brown hair color. But I will let you know when I find my first gray hair. So <laughs> I will let you know, and maybe my mind might change about how I feel about hair coloring. So I don't wanna say that I'll never color my hair because when I start going gray, I might decide that I want to. Um, so I will cross that bridge when I get there. Uh, I think that's it, but the, the main thing that I want to emphasize, can you guess? <laughs> the main thing I want to emphasize is the diet. That really has made such an impact, um, The specifically the zinc-rich foods and the protein-rich foods like eggs, whole eggs, really paying attention to my food choices and being consistent with the diet I've landed on for me. It has improved all of my health markers overall, but it has definitely boosted the appearance and the quality of my skin and my hair and my nails. Um, the external superficial things, it definitely impacts so I want to encourage everyone watching this, take a look at your diet and see what you can improve in terms of introducing nutrients that will be functional. Food matters, food makes a big difference, especially foods that are rich in zinc and rich in animal protein. Those foods will make the biggest difference in your hair. So my diet has the most impact on my hair. For sure it's not the shampoo or any of the superficial products that i use uh, it's what i am putting into my body that is having the biggest impact find out for yourself and see if you don't notice a huge difference like i did incorporating certain foods and being consistent with that and i wish you the best of luck if there's anything that i've missed that you would like to know as it pertains to my hair please leave it in the comments down below and I wanted to thank you as always for watching.